Good morning, Glory. <laughs> Molly's not exactly a morning star. <gasps> Molly, I have a great idea. I want you to dig into our couch and pull out a clue, a magic clue. And whatever you find will show us what our day's going to be all about. And remember, every day is a treasure. You just have to do the right digging to find it. Since I enjoy stretching on my clock rug, that's what I'm going to do right now. Be right back. And away she goes. Sometimes when I'm full of energy, I need to stretch like this. What'd you dig out? <gasps> a treasure map! <gasps> Neato! I love treasure maps! Oh, they're fun! See, I told you every day was a treasure. <gasps> oh. oh, wow! Oh, Molly, remember, it's not polite to grab things from other clowns, is it? <sighs> yes. I know you had it first, but you have to give turns, and now it's my turn. Oh, this treasure map is amazing! <gasps> I bet we could find real treasure with this, Molly. <gasps> Maybe even... Even a treasure chest, yes! <gasps> full of gold! Oh, a treasure chest full of gold. <gasps> I know, let's go on a treasure hunt. Want to? Okay, but first, we have to get dressed up like treasure hunters. Come on! Oh, what about this? Do I look like I'm going on a treasure hunt? I think not. <sighs> oh, Molly, that's perfect! Just what I needed. Worry, Molly. We'll find you a good hat, too, for treasure hunting. Something like, um... Oh! Like this. <sighs> Just look at us now, two brave, bold adventurers. I can be Dr. Looneyston, I presume. <laughs> and you can be, um... Oh! Stanley! Ah, oh. Stanley 
and Dr. Looneyston, ready to hunt for treasure. Look here on the map, Stanley. <gasps> Here's a giant X, and as every clown knows, X marks the spot, indubitably. <gasps> the spot where the treasure is buried. We must find it. Now, it says here on our map, we must take eight banana steps. Stanley, follow me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, oh, we are hot on the trail. Now, oh, we have to climb Big Comfy Mountain. Oh, I do love a challenge. Well, Stanley, here I go, to the top of Big Comfy Mountain! <laughs> Dr. Luniston's at the top! I can see for miles, but I do not see our treasure. Aha! We must dig for it! Stanley, shovel! As I said, X marks the spot, and this is where we have to dig for treasure! Dig, I said! Dig deep! <gasps> oh, I can't believe my eyes! <gasps> Look, Stanley! It's the golden hen! It lays golden eggs! Well, probably. Oh, and Cinderella's slipper! Well, the one she wore to the uh, garden ball. Oh, and the throne for the king of hearts! Stanley, what did you find? It's the hopeless diamond. It's famous and precious, and it's mine. I'm rich. I found the treasure. Yay! Oh. Molly, what's wrong? I think Molly's upset. Molly, are you upset? She is, I can tell. And I know why. Molly, I know why you're upset. And I can make it all better. Honest. Here you go. Your very own treasure. There. Now you have your treasure. And I have mine. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It's probably the biggest diamond in the whole wide world. <gasps>
Molly and I are having a disagreement. Well, she thinks I was a greedy grabber, and I think, well, she just wants what I have. And anyway, I gave her her very own treasure already. <sighs> Sometimes when you can't get along with your doll, it's better to do different things for a while. I think I'll go outside to cool off. Come on. Hmm. Wow, well, you gotta keep your treasure safe. Hmm. See ya, Molly. Sorry, Stuckle Fritz. <laughs> Didn't mean to grab your tail like that. Listen, are there any uh, letters or postcards in there for me? Oh, uh, has Major Bedhead been here? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, Major Bedhead, goody! Oh, Major Bedhead, cool! Well, actually, it's kind of warm in the sun with the top down. Uh, right. <laughs> I mean, nice car. Where'd you get it? Oh, well, my unicycle's in the fix-it shop. So they gave me this loaner. Cute, huh? Oh, very. Don't you just love it? Mm -hmm. It's got four wheels. Well, five if you include the steering wheel. <laughs> and it's got this neat trunk that you can keep stuff in. Now, I think there's a package in here for you somewhere. Nope. Oh, mine? No, this here is for Tiny and his big band. And this is for that corporate clown. What's his name? Oh, Blazo, so he can get to the top. Yee! Snickle Fritz, it's not polite to grab. Now, I know there's a package shaped like a football in here somewhere. A football? Yeah, and I think it was addressed to you. Let's see. Oh, whoa. No, <laughs> this here right all-day toothbrush is for Smiley. No, uh, but... And, uh, ooh! This trampoline toolkit is for the ladies' lunch group. Yeah, but Major Bedhead... Gee, it must be here somewhere. Yeah, it, it's right. It's just the... Um, Major Bedhead, it's... Wait, here. I'll show you. It's right... Major Bedhead, it's... Lunette, don't grab. That's rude. Oopsie. Haven't you heard the old saying, Gimme, gimme never gets. Don't you know your manners yet? Well, I think it's time you learn this very important lesson in life. Manners matter. You just grab it. You've acquired a real bad habit. Tension eases when you remember your thanks and pleases. I'm not asking you beg, I don't need no applause. I'm not gonna renege, but you're just grasping at straws. Cause gimme, gimme, never get hats. No, no. Gimme, gimme, never, never, ever get. I'll deliver. But the way you're acting just makes me shiver. I have not heard. What I need is the magic word. Please always finish this first. So when you're placing your bets, get the gist of this verse. Give me never, never, ever. Give me, give me never, give me hats. No, no. Give me, give me never, never. Gimme, gimme, never get hats. Gimme, gimme, never, never, ever get. Gimme, never get. Gimme, never get. Wow, you're right. Manners do matter. Major Bedhead, may I please have my parcel now? Why, certainly. Package and. 
postcard for Lunette the Clown. Why, thank you, Major Badhead. You're welcome. Gee, I wonder what it is. I don't think it's a saxophone. Do you? Ah. Hmm, me neither. Oh, look, it's from my Auntie Macassar. No. Yup. Let's see what she says. My dearest Lunette. Girl, I always thought football was a really rude game. Some clown would snatch and grab my football and run away with it. They never even said please and thank you. The nerve. <laughs> but last season, when I was captain of the Clown Town cleat team, I learned that's how you play the game. <laughs> On the football field, it's okay to snatch and grab. <laughs> I know manners matter to you, too. Right. <laughs> but on days when you want to grab without saying please and thank you, play football. Hmm. Have fun without me. Love your... Auntie, Auntie Macassar. Here. <laughs> what the? Meow. Sicko Fritz. <laughs> 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 Snickle Fritz, come here. Stick, hey, it's mine. That's not fair. Aha. Oh. Uh -huh. Excuse me, Snickle Fritz. May I please have my football? Wow. Thank you. Oh, you have very good manners for a kitty. Yeah. Which reminds me... Oh... Today I had very bad manners for a clown. Oh, I was grabby. I better get back to the couch and apologize to Molly. Well, I better get going too. Hey, who made this big? Wow! Oh, right. <laughs> okay, cleanup time. Well, see you guys later. Come on, let's go find Molly. I want to tell her I'm sorry for being such a greedy grabber. Ah, oh. oh, Molly. Excuse me, Molly. But I think I have something that's yours. The Hopeless Diamond. Oh, Molly, finders keepers, and I'm sorry I grabbed it away from you earlier. Please accept my apology. That means I'm saying sorry. Ah. Uh, oh, um. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Best friends again. <sighs> See the football that Auntie Macassar sent me for fun? <gasps> hey, Molly, want to have some fun with me? Goody! Let's go to the Dance Academy. Come on! Boys and gorillas, today at Miss Lunette's Dance Academy, it's a football fantasy with Lunette the Clown. a lot of fun, but sheesh, what a lot of work. Well, I'm gonna go bananas right now if I don't have a nice, quiet time. So, Molly, please tell me, what would you like to do? Read a story? Well, thank you for that good idea. <laughs> now, um, where are my glasses in the storybook? Oh. oh, why, thank you, Molly. Here they are. And oh, here's the storybook. Ha! Huh. Now, are you comfy? Yep. Are you comfy? Goody. Okay, now Molly, would you please clap on the light? Thank you, Molly. <laughs> we have good manners. And we need good light for reading and to see the pictures. 
Right, Molly? Molly, would you please pick a story from our book? Perf! Look at this. It's a story called Banana Manners. Once upon a time, I think it was a Thursday, there was a little monkey who lived in the jungle. His name was Thelonious. Thelonious was a busy little monkey, busy bugging all his monkey pals, grabbing and snatching all their favorite things. Like coconuts, like bananas, and to really be a bother, Thelonious loved to tug their tails and hightail it out of there. That was his best joke. Well, his monkey friends didn't think his joke was very funny, but Thelonious thought he was very cool. He wasn't. Thelonious liked to surprise his monkey pals. He would grab a vine and swoop down and take whatever he liked. Thelonious' favorite thing in the whole jungle was bananas. Big bananas, small bananas, a matter of fact, all bananas. He didn't care if some other monkey picked it. Thelonious would just grab it and eat it so fast. What could the other little monkeys do? Well, one day, a very special day, I think it was a Thursday, Thelonious learned something new. Thelonious grabbed the wrong banana. Would the gorilla get mad? Would the gorilla get mean? No. The gorilla was very gentle and very kind and very wise. He taught Thelonious two magic monkey words. The first one was... <coughs> ee, ee. That means please in monkey talk. And the other magic word was... <coughs> That means thank you to monkeys. So now, whenever Thelonious wants something from another monkey, he says his magic word, ee, ee, and he always says, ooh, ooh, when some monkey shares with him. Thelonious grabs is a jungle vine to swing through the jungle with his friends. And that's cool. The end. I love happy endings. Molly, would you please clap off the light? Thank you, Molly. Did you like that story? You know, that monkey reminded me of... Can you guess? Me! Before, when I was a grabby little monkey. But now I would say, ee, ee, ooh, ooh, ee, ee. Hey, who made this big mess? <coughs> Me? I did, didn't I? Well then, I have to clean it up. It's only fair, so get ready for the 10 second tidy. Ready, set, go! Before we have a little nap, give me a hug. <laughs> Molly, you're my treasure forever. <clears throat> Thank you for coming over. Please come again another day. And remember, manners matter because friends matter the most. Toodles. Molly and I just had a nice little nap on the couch, didn't we, Molly? Mm-hmm. And there's nothing like a good stretch after a nap, right? Mmm, it makes me feel so hungry. Whew. In fact, really hungry. Are you hungry, Molly? Hmm. 
Why, I'm so hungry. Well, I could eat a... an electric guitar? Well, okay, maybe not that hungry. But I am definitely hungry enough to eat a... sombrero. Oh, what do you think, Wally? Ah. Uh, nah. <laughs> no. But there must be something in here that we can eat. Let's see. Oh. Now why does that giant keep leaving his toothpicks in our couch? Sheesh. <laughs> he does, you know. <sighs> Let's see. Ah, now we're talking. All right, a tea party. Well, we've got everything we need in here. Huh, I'll just, uh, hmm, I think I'll go stretch to make room for our tea party. Here, Molly, can you set the table while I stretch on my clock rug? Great, thanks. Well, I'll be right back. See if you can do this. It's fun. Molly, we're all set for our tea party. Yeah. Now, you can sit here. There. And I'll sit here in my chair. There. Now all we need is the meal. Well, what do you feel like eating, Molly? Donuts? Oh, I don't know, Molly. I mean, donuts are good for dessert or a snack, maybe, but uh, they're not exactly what I'd call a good, healthy meal. What do you want, really? Donuts with sprinkles. <sighs> Molly may not like this, but she is going to have a good, healthy meal, or my name is not Lunette the Clown. Now, let's see what we have in the couch that's good and healthy. Mmm. <gasps> oh, look, Molly. Celery. Yummy. And squash squares. <laughs> oh, look. A carrot. And cauliflower au naturel. And my personal favorite, spinach tarts! Yay! Okay, Molly, yummy! Get ready for all this good food. Here you go, young dolly. Yum, okay. Eat up, Molly. <sighs> now, well, I see I'm going to have to use some... Uh, Doll psychology here. Okay, Molly. Uh, here we go. I know. Here comes the airplane. It's coming in for a landing. Open up the hangar and let in the airplane. Molly, don't you want the airplane to land? No. Oh. Well then, I'll just try another one. Um. I know. Okay, here comes the choo-choo train chugging down the track. Chugga, 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 woo, woo. Chugga, 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 chugga. And there's the tunnel. Here comes the train chugga, chugga into the tunnel. Woo. Yee. Molly, don't you want the train to go into the tunnel? No. Oh, I see. Well, hmm. that's it. I am fresh out of Trick the Doll into eating games. <laughs> Molly, your food is all over the floor! 
Did you do that on purpose? Well, I'm afraid that's it, Molly. You have to eat all your food or, well, there's just no dessert for you, young clown. That's right, Molly. You can kiss dessert goodbye, unless I see you clean up that plate. There, that's better. See, it's not so bad. Oh, maybe we should leave her alone to eat. We don't want her to feel like we're watching her. Let's go visit the Foley family. Maybe the Foley's are having better luck with food. wasn't so tough, was it? <laughs> Good job, Molly. I'll... Spinach tart? Hey, where'd this come from? Oh, I think there's something fishy going on here. Hmm. No? Okay, Molly. Aha! Uh -huh. Squash square? So you ate everything, huh? This is serious. Okay, Miss Molly, are you gonna eat this food? No! You're such a picky eater! I don't know what to do! Got any ideas? Hmm. Hey, I know who can help. Granny Garbanzo. She'll know how to deal with a picky eater. Come on, I'll be back. Snicky, come on, don't be picky, Snicky. Oh, what's the matter with Snicklefritz, Granny Garbanzo? He doesn't know what's good for him. I just can't get him to eat his cat food. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of that going around today. I made Molly a whole plate full of healthy food, and she won't eat any of it. No, another picky eater. You can say that again. No, another. Did you try the airplane into hangar trick? Mm-hmm. The choo-choo train into tunnel trick? Yep. Nothing. Phew. That Molly is some picky eater. <sighs> yep. Well, Granny, did you always eat everything you were supposed to? Me? Are you kidding? Every crumb. Every morsel, every... Well, not exactly. You mean you were a picky eater? When I was a little girl, I hated vegetables. <gasps> really? Yep. I can still remember how my granny used to try to get me to eat them. Oh, what'd she do? 
She used to say that if I didn't finish up all my vegetables, they would come back and dance at the foot of my bed at night. All the peas and carrots and potatoes would ask, Why? Why? Why didn't you eat me all up? Oh, poor vegetables. Granny used to say, Little garbanzo, clean your plate. Why, yes, I would reply, Cross my heart and hope to die. And just like Granny said, When you're safe in bed, Guilt will fill your head as they say. Why, why, why won't you eat me, they say. Picky, 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 picky girl. I can help you, Thee, but you pick cake instead of me. Oh, where you really can't compare red. It's definitely no carrot. Why, 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 why won't you eat me, they say. Picky, 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 picky girl. Why, 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 why won't you eat me, we say. Picky, 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 picky girl. Girl, you done me wrong. I got the feeling I don't belong. Well, I know just what you did. Cause I got eyes in the back of my head when I saw you chewing your cud. I could have had a spider. Uh, why? 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 Why, 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 why won't, won't you, you eat me? me they say, picky, 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 picky girl. <laughs> why? 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 Why, why, why won't, won't you eat me? We say, picky, 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 picky girl. I don't know what to do. Well, it's not that hard to see. You want another clue? Just follow the bouncing bee! Why? 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 Why won't you eat me? We say, picky, 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 picky girl. Why? Why? Why won't you eat me? We say, picky, 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 picky girl. Wow. What a neat way to get you to eat. Did it work, Granny? Nope. I was still a picky eater until I grew up a little and started eating things that were good for me. And then, one day, I discovered something incredible about all those vegetables. What? They tasted good! <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of vegetables... Hi, everybody. Hi, Major Bedhead. Hello, Bedhead. Special delivery for Lunette the Clown. You're delivering a turnip? <laughs> Maybe it's from the parsnip post. Well, actually, it's part of my lunch. Oh. What I meant to say was, special delivery for Lunette the Sandwich? <laughs> Lunette the Sandwich. <laughs> Yikes, that's a good one, huh? I know it was in here somewhere. Let's see, a roast beef and, uh, oh, chuckleberry juice, <laughs> uh, french fries, and, ooh, gravy. And, oh, aha, uh -huh. special delivery for Lunette the Clown. Oh, oh hang on. Wait. Whoops. Wait, hang here, just. No, I think. Take this, put this. No, if you put oh, this pickle up juice. here. Hey! Oops. My lunch. Special delivery for Lunette the Clown. Thanks. <laughs> oh, look, it's from my Auntie Macassar. Dear Lunette, you'll never guess what happened to me the other day. <coughs> Time's up. I was a contestant on a game show called Pick Your Prize. Okay, Auntie Macassar, pick your subject on Pick Your Prize. Okay, I pick noses to win, Bob. All right. The skill testing question is, What's under your eyes, above your mouth, and between your ears? Okay, okay. Under my eyes, between my... My nose? That's absolutely correct! Hello, what she's won, Johnny! Thanks, Bob! Annie McCasser, you've won the prize by the curtain where the lovely Harold Merrill is standing. Let's give her a big hand. Well, okay, let's just give her this hand. Oh, thank you! Thank you! It's what I've always wanted! Oh. It was so exciting, and I want you to share in the excitement. So, I've sent you my prize that I handpicked just for you. Ooh. It's the hand! Perfect! Oh, I couldn't have picked a better prize if I picked it myself. It's a great picker, all right. Picker? Sure. You can pick out anything you want with that. 
You know, you point at something and say, I'll pick this instead of that. Oh, right, Granny. Okay, watch. Um... Oh, I pick this lovely-looking watermelon. Mm-hmm. And I pick that tree, please. Yep. Let's see, what else do I pick? I pick... Oh, this porch with this cat sitting eating that bowl of food. Eating that bowl of food? Snickle Fritz. Well, I guess he just needed to choose when he wanted to eat. Well, speaking of picking and choosing, I have lots more deliveries to make. Um, which way should I go? Oh, I pick that way. Alrighty. Bye, everybody. Uh, bye, Major Bedhead. <laughs> hmm, this gives me an idea. You know, maybe Molly could use a hand with her meal. It could work. Well, see you later, Granny. Bye-bye. Here it is. My handy-dandy menu. Ahem. Welcome to Lunette's Luncheonette. Would you like to choose something from our menu? Okay, there are many different delicious items to choose from. Yes, now what would you like to have? Oh, the carrot. Excellent choice. It's the Specialité de la Maison. Now we can eat. What was your favorite, Molly? Oh, the donuts with sprinkles. Yup, they were good, all right. I cleaned up my plate. And now there's something else we should clean up. Us! Come on, Molly. <sighs> you know, Molly, we can't always pick what we want to eat. But it sure is nice when we can, isn't it? And after we eat, little clowns like us always brush our teeth, don't we? Uh-huh. Huh. Perf. Hey, how would you like to go pick a story? Okay, let's get the storybook. Okay, there you go, Molly. Now, let's see. Ah, here's the storybook. And... My glasses. And now the light, because it's important to have good light. Okay, Molly, since today is your day for picking what you want, you get to pick the story. So? A story about dust bunnies? Well, okay, I'll look, but <laughs> I don't think I'll find a sto- Hey! Well, what do you know? There is a story about dust bunnies. It's called The Dust Bunny's Day Off. <laughs> well, it was a very special day under the big comfy couch. It was the Dust Bunny's Day Off. Once upon a time, there were two little dust bunnies who lived under the couch. Their names were Fuzzy and Wuzzy. One day, a big gust of wind blew through the house and under the couch and blew the dust bunnies away. They were carried far and wide. Those dust bunnies sailed over the trees and over the rooftops. They floated on the wind all the way to Clown Town. And that's when the breeze blew the dust bunnies through a window and right into Chez Poupée, the most fancy and snooty restaurant in all of Clown Town. Fuzzy and Wuzzy landed with a dusty thump under one of the restaurant tables. Boy, oh boy, what a place. This restaurant was huge and full of clowns and full of food, which was a good thing. These two dust bunnies were getting hungry. 
They checked under the tables, they dodged the feet of the servers, they even lounged around at the salad bar. But they didn't really like any of the food they found. It just wasn't dust bunny food. Fuzzy was growing faint with hunger. Wuzzy's stomach was making rude, gurgly noises. They were hungry bunnies. And that's when they saw the door to the kitchen. Quick as a wink, they ran inside and climbed up on the table. There on a plate was a fancy dish. It looked and smelled terrific. So Fuzzy and Wuzzy hunkered down and had themselves a feast. They ate the peas, they ate the squash, they even ate the beef. But suddenly it grew quite dark. What was going on? And then the lid was lifted. And that's when Fuzzy and Wuzzy found themselves sitting in the middle of a dining room table. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Eek! shrieked the matron. Ye gods, cried the mayor. The maitre d' apologized as he swept away the plate. And then he tossed the plate and the dust bunnies out the back door. Before they landed in the trash bin, another breeze came by. It grabbed Fuzzy and it grabbed Wuzzy and they began to fly. Over the rooftops, over the trees, back through the window. This time Fuzzy and Wuzzy Dust Bunny landed with a big fat thump because of all the food they'd eaten. But they didn't care. They were home safe and sound and ready for a snooze. And that's just what they did. The end. Well, that was a good story you picked, Molly. But it doesn't mean I believe in dust bunnies. But you do. Okay, well, maybe I'll just have a look down at... Hey, wait a second. Oh, who made this big mess? <coughs> Me? Oh, I did, didn't I? Well then, I have to clean it up. It's only fair. So get ready for the 10 second tidy. Ready, set, go! Well, you know, Molly, all that picking today made me kind of tired. How about you? Yeah, but you know what I like picking best of all? <laughs> Molly! I'm glad I picked you as my best friend. <sighs> you too? Good. Oh, and we're glad we picked you too. See you soon. Goody! Oh, just a sec, because I really have to find Molly's... Fiddle! Here we go, Molly. Your fiddle. We needed to find Molly's fiddle, because she's going to play for me when I make my step dancing man dance. Right, Molly? Now, where is that little step dancing man? Hmm, probably right next to this step. <laughs> Yep, getting close. It's important to be organized. Ah, everything in its place and a place for everything. And right next to that step should be that little old baby shoe. Make that too. Oh, my itty bitty baby shoes. Ah, oh, these are the very shoes I wore when I took my very first steps. Oh, aren't they cute, Molly? <laughs> you know, I couldn't always walk. No, I had to learn. Just like every clown. Just like you. One day you had to take your very first step all by yourself. Just like me. I didn't know how to, but I knew I wanted to walk all by my very own self. At first, I was afraid to try, because what if I fell down? That would hurt. But I really wanted to walk, like a big clown. 
So, I didn't let being scared stop me. Nope. I took a big breath and took a little step. And then another. I learned to walk all by myself. One little baby step at a time. That was one of the most important days of my whole life. It was... Well, it was, Molly. Because, well, if I never tried to walk, I'd still be crawling. Yep, I couldn't dance or skip or anything. And it all started with these cute, itty-bitty baby shoes. <sighs> now, what was I going to get? Oh, yeah! Oh, the step dancing doll! Now, where is it? You're going to play the music, right, Molly? <sighs> oh, here's the step dancing man. Okay, he can do some real steps. Um, oh, gee. He needs a good dance floor to do his steps. Uh, oh, perf! Okay, here we go. This is going to be great. This can be his pretend stage. Take a nice bow, okay, Molly? Be back in a flash. Sometimes you need to stretch to warm up. I'm all set to do some step dancing. Ready, Molly? Oh, no, I didn't mean those steps. You thought I meant the stairs? Oh, well, I didn't. But what a great idea! Let's go play on the stairs. Oh, come on, Molly, let's go. It'll be fun. The stairs are one of my very favorite places. And, of course, we'll be very careful. Let's go! <sighs> my big, climby stairs. Don't you just love them, Molly? <sighs> stairs are fun. But you have to be very careful when climbing the stairs. Yep, when you climb up or down, it's important to hold the banister. Like this. Watch! I can climb 
the stairs. <laughs> Golly, I think maybe Molly's afraid to climb the stairs. Don't worry, Molly. I'll come down to you. There. <sighs> Ooh, these stairs are pretty high. You're right. Molly, do you want to learn to climb the stairs? Okay, well, I was wondering, um, are you afraid to try? Ah, that's like I was when I was little. Mm-hmm. But I just took a big breath and I tried. And guess what? I did it, even though I was afraid. It's like this. Take a seat here by my side. Shuffle your feet to the top of my pride and joy. I enjoy this private place. Grab a stair while I state my case. A stare, a star, a wishing well. A lot they are alike, I can tell. If I reach the top, I can climb back down. That's a step in the right direction. I can't think of anywhere that I'd rather be than the top of my fair staircase. The case is clear and I can't complain. Take a step here while I explain. A stare, a star, a wishing well. Somehow they are the same. I can tell if I reach the top, I can climb back down. That's a step in the right direction. You put your foot in front and the next one ahead. Before you know you're upstairs, you can come back down again. There a place to feel and a place to move. Come on, make a deal, find your stride. Improve. A stare, a star, a wishing well. A lot they are alike, I can tell if I reach the top. I can climb back down, that's a step in the right direction. What do you think, Molly? Ready to try? Just one? I'll be your spotter. A spotter makes sure you don't hurt yourself. So, Molly, if you start to fall, I'll catch you. Promise. Ready to try? I'm right behind you, Molly. You can do it. I know you can. That's a girl. Ta-da! Hey, you did it! Molly climbed this stair. Take a bow, Molly. Let's go outside and tell Granny and Snickle Fritz the good news. Molly climbed a stair, Molly climbed a stair. <laughs> Snicklepuss, come down from there. Meow, 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 meow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Capusta! Okay, Mr. Smarty Cat, don't come meowing to me if you get stuck. Oi. Oi, oi, oi. Hello, Granny. Oh, hello, Lunetka. Guess what? Molly climbed a stair. Little Molly climbed a stair? Yep. All by her very own self. All by herself? Oh, my! Well, then, I say, let's have a celebration. This is an important day. Told ya. We'll have a nice snack. I have some nice, fresh squoze lemonade and some nice warm biscuits. Oh, warm biscuits, yum! I think I have... One jar left of your favorite, Lunette. 
Ginger beet jelly. Oh, warm biscuits with ginger beet jelly. Mm. My last jar for little Molly's big day. This is a special occasion. We're having refreshments down here, Mr. Smarty Cat. Ginger beet jelly, that's my favorite! Wow. Mm. Although, it didn't used to be. Oh, I was afraid it would be sour. But then I tried it. <gasps> is it ever good? Oh, I can't wait! It is raving in my mouth just thinking about it. Mm -mm -mm. Ginger beet jelly! Oh, Lunetka, I need your help. Sure thing, Granny. What can I do? I need you to get that last jar of ginger beet jelly. Down in the root cellar. <gasps> the root cellar? Oh, I've never been down there before. I think it's kind of, uh, scary. I'll just open the trap door. You go down there and get the last jar. Come on. It's down there on the shelf. Oh, boy, Molly. I really want some ginger beet jelly, and Granny needs my help, but... <sighs> well, you didn't let being scared stop you from trying something new, did you? No. So here we go. <sighs> I just take a deep breath. <gasps> down we go. your foot in front. Oh, next one ahead. Step in the right direction. What was that? Did you hear something, Molly? Oh, I'm sure I heard something. Oh, maybe there's a cellar monster down here. Oh, oh, yes! oh, 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 oh. Snickle Fritz, oh, it's you. You scared me. <gasps> what y'all doing down there in the dark? Oh, you sillies. You could trip or something. Got to be careful on the stairs. Oh, well, right, Granny. Oh, wow. So this is the root cellar. Oh, well, there's really nothing for me to be afraid of, is there? No. Huh, silly me. Huh. Oh, I'm glad I'm down here now. Oh, this is really neat. Wow. <gasps> and there it is. Ginger beet jelly. Coming, Granny. Lemonade, biscuits, pickles for that sour puss. And ginger beet jelly. What's that sound? Dancing shoes? That's gotta be Major Bedhead! That's some nifty footsteps there, Bedhead. Come have a snack with us. Oh, got my dancing shoes on, Granny. Can't sit down. Gotta dance. Me too. When you get dancy, you gotta dance. That's the law. Some lemonade, bedhead. You deserve some cool drink after all that fancy stepping. <laughs> Thanks, Granny. <laughs> but before I take my lemonade break, I better do my job. Postcard for Lunette the Clown. Oh, why, thank you, Major Bedhead. Oh, it's from my Auntie Macassar. She says, Dear Lunette, Girl, I'm gonna let you in on my secret. How to be a world-traveling explorer. Here it is. Comfy feet. <laughs> Each step counts. And you want to feel comfy as you set out to explore this big, wonderful world of ours. Good shoes. <laughs> That's what it takes. Planning. 
Love you no matter where these feet take me. Mm. Auntie Macassar. Mm. Auntie Macassar's right. These snazzy tap shoes are dandy for dancing, but to tell you the truth, they're really uncomfortable. They give me corns. See? I don't believe it. Luckily, I brought my sensible shoes. Those are your sensible shoes, Major Bedhead? Oh, sure. I can really sashay down the road in these. <laughs> well, off I go, putting my best foot forward. Oh, I guess it's this one. <laughs> Bye, Major Bedhead. Bye. Have fun. Have fun. Goes. <laughs> well, Granny. Molly and I have to follow our feet back to the couch. I'm all stuffed and need a quiet time. But thanks for the snacks. Oh, you're welcome, my little friends. It was fun. Mm -hmm. See you. Bye. Snickle Fritz, did I ever show you my fancy up and down the ladder dance? Ah. Oh. Well, let's go back to the big comfy couch and get comfy. Oh. I couldn't help myself, Molly. Mmm. I ate so many biscuits. Ooh. Gee, can you think of something nice and quiet we can do now? Is it Molly smart? A story? What a good idea. Okay, now where are my... Here they are. And the book is right... Here. And the light. Thank you, Molly. It's important to have good light so you can read and see the pictures. Now, Molly, you choose. What story is it going to be? It's your special day. Oh, this looks good. Let's see. It's a story of a little elf. Once upon a shoemaker's shelf, there lived a little elf named Emma. Emma had a big problem. And so did the shoemaker, Willie. He had so much work to do. Why? Because the very next night, Clown Town was having its biggest dance, the Clown Tillion. And all the clowns wanted brand new fancy dancy shoes. And Willie the Shoemaker had to make all of them. It was a big job. Why was that a problem for Emma the Elf? Because she wanted to help Willie. But how? She didn't even know how to make a slipper. Poor Willie. He worked and worked as hard as he could until it was very late and then he fell asleep. Willie needed help now. Emma the elf tiptoed down from her shelf. What could she do? There were scissors and hammers and needles and thread and laces and patterns. Oh, where to start? What if she hit her thumb with a hammer or cut the leather in the shape of a mitten by mistake? Well, there was only one thing to do. Take a deep breath and try. So Emma cut and sewed and hammered until... A pair of shoes fit for a clown. This was fun, but could she do it again? She could try. Cut, hammer, thread that needle. Little Emma the elf worked all by herself as Willie the shoemaker snored and dreamed of clowns with no shoes. It was a bad dream. In the middle of the night, Emma was falling asleep, too. How could she keep going? Luckily, the cat from the Hey Diddle Diddle Cafe was just on his way home. Every clown knows that dancing keeps an elf wide awake. So whenever Emma got a bit tired, she did a few fancy steps while the cat fiddled. Finally, the sun came up. Willie couldn't believe his eyes. He thought he must still be dreaming. Clown shoes! Gleaming, shiny clown shoes! For all the dancy feet in Clown Town. The clowns wanted to jump for joy. Perf! They couldn't thank Willie enough. But Willie wondered who he should thank. I guess you could thank me, Emma the Elf. What a surprise! Willie thanked Emma and asked what he could do just for her. Emma had a good idea. Let's go to the Clown Chilean and be dancing fools with all the other clowns. But Willie had a secret. 
He didn't know how to dance. Emma had the answer. Just take a big breath and try. So Willie did. And they had more fun than you are allowed, dancing with all the clowns of Clown Town in their fancy dancing shoes. The end. <sighs> what a good story. You like it, Molly? I'd love to go to Clown Town someday, to the Clown Tillion Ball. <gasps> I'd do my favorite dance, the Funky Chicken. Do you know that one? It goes like this, Molly. Hey, who made this big mess? <coughs> Me? Huh, I did, didn't I? Well then, I have to clean it up. It's only fair. So get ready for the 10 second tidy. Ready, set, go! took a lot of steps today, Molly, and we sure used up a lot of shoes. Oh, hey, where are my baby shoes? Oh, just a sec. Ah, here they are, my itty-bitty baby shoes. And you know what, Molly? I'm ready to have an itty-bitty nap right about now. <sighs> I'm glad you could come to play on the big comfy couch. See you again soon. Toodles. And Molly, tomorrow I'm going to teach you the funky chicken. Yep, if you teach me the Texas two-step. <sighs> And the clown jumped over the moon. Uh.